Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Pause to praise. Let me share something from Psalm 146 in the first five verses, which says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes and human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. I just saw a Facebook picture with a little old lady being celebrated on her 122nd birthday. They say a picture says a thousand words, but I'm not going to use those many words to tell you about this beautiful sight. I just want you to know that it was a picture that was so attractive. This little old lady, she sat down on a throne looking regal in her fancy outfit, a floral headpiece and a sash. 122 years old. That is worthy of celebration. On another note, yesterday I watched some videos of recent track and field events. That is my favorite sport, incidentally. But in one of those videos, a female team from Nigeria won the 4x100 meters relay at a recent track event and the announcer went ballistic i mean that video ought to be played in schools and on radio and television all over nigeria this woman was ecstatic beyond description i think she still must be shouting for joy it was priceless there's something about praise that causes the human spirit to rise way above the issues of the moment to a place of joy and delight this is why family members love to go to graduations, which otherwise can be boring. We love to see all our relatives, our children, our spouses, our best friends walk across the stage and receive a handshake, a diploma, a trophy, whatever is being handed out. It is worth sitting through speeches. It is worth all the trouble of paying tuition and sacrifice and all that family do while their relative is going through school. Some people simply go crazy. Don't even talk about weddings. Some people are upset when they are not invited to a wedding. I'm amazed at the, at the way some people are joyful, happy beyond words, to witness two persons getting married and one of them is their best friend, their cousin, their niece, their daughter. If you have a Bible, there's a book of Psalms and the book is called Psalms, incidentally. It is a collection of 150 psalms written by several people, but the majority are written from the pen of David. They are beautiful, powerful, expressive, relevant, appropriate, full of life, dynamic. Everyone can find a couple of psalms that they can identify with. But the last seven psalms are wild. They say what you want to say, but you couldn't find the right words. The writer or writers went to great lengths to pronounce superlative praises to God. When I tell you these Psalms are powerful, you will have to read them for yourself. But let me invite you to explore a section of the 145th Psalm. Incidentally, all of these Psalms carry the opening Hebrew word, Hallelujah which simply means praise the Lord. Who is the center of these loud praises? They are about God, spoken of in so many different ways. God is described as my rock and my fortress. God is celebrated as the maker of heaven and earth. God is celebrated as the one who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. One psalm speaks boldly. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heaven. Wow! One psalm states categorically, Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of his faithful people. The final psalm is the mother of all psalms. 
It's a dramatic call to praise. The writer is a master conductor musician and he calls out the expert players of numerous musical instruments and joyfully commands them to strike up a glorious anthem of praise on each instrument. And as if the instruments and their players are not doing enough, this master musician who knows God and who is in a season of praise and worship simply concludes, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. You are left speechless. You are in awe at the ease with which these writers pen words and no doubt put these pieces of poetry to music in celebration of God by singing praises. Our text gives us a glimpse of what one writer is celebrating. When you praise God, you are honoring him for what he has done and especially for you. He says that he will praise God for as long as he lives. Think about that. What has God done for this writer that with all sincerity and honesty, he declares that he will praise God for as long as he lives? Undoubtedly, God has done something for him that is huge, or God continues to do something special for him daily, and the best thing to do is to choose to praise God every day. Listen to him speak truth. He says that you must not put your trust in humans who cannot save. Save from what? You should not have asked me that question because I could keep you engaged for the next several hours. Has God saved you? Well, he has saved me and I can't stop praising him. I could use metaphors to explain, but let me tell you just a piece of what it means for God to save you. I found out one day that I was a sinner, which turns out that I was not in relationship with God the Creator. That is significant, but not enough. I later found out that if I stay that way when I die, I would be going to hell with Satan forever. We can talk about hell some other time, but I did not want to go to hell. So I turned to God and he saved me from a future in hell. He saved me and made me a member of his family. He saved me and he has been living inside of me ever since. He saved me and he does some amazing things to me. He saved me. So guess what? I am like these writers. I just simply want to praise the Lord. Praise him for who he is. Praise him for what he has done for me. Praise him simply because he is God and there is no one like him. None, period. So I say to you, praise the Lord.